Good evening, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. My kids just finished having a squirt gun fight with the neighbor kid and they're inside enjoying their dinner and I am getting ready to go for my evening run and I thought I would take a few moments to pause and talk to you all about how I saved some money on my tomato starts. Now, I've been growing tomatoes for 20 years. Uh, I mean, even before that, I was really inspired to become a gardener and one of the first things that absolutely fascinated me in the garden was my grandfather in Indiana grew these enormous tomatoes. My mom's always grown tomatoes. She would pay me a nickel per tomato hornworm that I would go and catch and pick off her tomato plants for her. And I've always loved fresh tomatoes, right? There's nothing like a fresh tomato. It's an entirely different food than the horrible, pale, pithy, industrial, picked under ripe and stored in a refrigerator tomato that most places serve. Fresh, warm, off the vine tomato, deep in color, rich in anthocyanins, rich in nutrients, intense in flavor, nothing like it. So I've always grown my own tomatoes. When we lived in University City in St. Louis in an upstairs small apartment, I grew tomatoes out back on the parking lot behind our apartment complex in buckets. I've always had tomatoes. So for years and years and years, I started all my tomatoes from seed. And this involved obviously combing through seed catalogs and trying lots of new varieties. And for a long time, this was the only way to get more unusual varieties of tomato was to order them from a seed catalog. I like uh, Fedco, I like Territorial, um, I always try and choose an organically sourced seed if I can afford it, although growing it out organically is more important. Even more important than that is picking open pollinated heirloom varieties that support local farmers and don't support Monsanto. Um, I do sometimes grow a few hybrid tomatoes because they're real tasty and do really well. But for the last three or four years, I actually haven't started any tomatoes from seed at all. I still start tomatillos, I still start Cape gooseberries from seed but I buy my tomato starts. And that may not seem like the most sustainable permaculture option, but in my opinion, permaculture is about community interconnectedness and an integrated local economy. And for me, that means buying my tomatoes from a local nursery for $2 a plant. So this year I'm growing eight tomatoes. Now sometimes I have a friend who lives in Idaho brings me some of his tomato starts because he starts tons from seed. And I used to work with a nonprofit and grow 20, 25 tomato plants in my garden and donate most of the tomatoes. With COVID happening, that is on hold. So I'm only growing tomatoes for my family. So this year I'll be growing eight tomato plants, two cherry varieties, and a number of slicers and beef steaks and one Roma. Won't be canning my own tomatoes this year. So for eight plants, the cost was $16 and very little headache on my part. To purchase these seeds would have cost me about $37.50. So I save money by not having to purchase seeds where I'm only gonna need one plant out of each packet and then I'll have to invest in starter mix or compost and nurture it all the way from germination to planting out. Instead, I spent 16 bucks and I bought from two local nurseries, organic, tomatoes organically grown from organic seed. So for me, that is a cost-effective way of growing tomatoes. And now our local nurseries carry a huge diversity of varieties. So it's not like I'm looking at a couple of hybrid varieties. Like, you know, I can get a huge array of heirloom varieties that I really like. I really like black creme. It's one of my favorite salad tomatoes. Easy to find at the garden center now. So let me show you how I take care of them. Give me one second and I'll flip the camera around. So when I buy my pots, I always buy the four inch size because it's the cheapest. Don't ever buy those one or two gallon pot. Like why would you spend six or eight dollars on a tomato start? That makes no sense. So I get the four inch size and then I pot it by removing the first set of true leaves, remove these, and then remove the first set of true leaves and plant it burying all of that immediately in a one gallon pot. And then that will take off and do extremely well. And by the time it is 
time to plant it outdoors in mid-May in my climate, I will have a bunch of big strong tomato plants. So right now this week we're experiencing quite warm temperatures overnight. And I don't have to bring these in because it's staying about 50, 52 degrees. But when it's colder, I bring them in and put them in the house at night. So these are gonna get potted up immediately. And then I've got my eight tomatoes, $16 commitment. And I feel like for me, that's just a better choice. I'm supporting two local nurseries and feed stores, and I am saving myself more than 50% of the cost of starting tomatoes and saving myself some time and energy. Now, if I want to go back to growing 30 plus kinds of tomatoes and having several of each variety, I'll go back to starting with seed. But for now, this is what works for me. So thanks for watching. I'm going to go for my run and when I get back, I'm going to pot up my tomatoes, including my brandy wines, which may or may not ripen depending on how hot our summer is, but I'm a sucker for them anyway, so I'll definitely be growing them. Please be sure and tune back in later in mid-May when I plant out my tomatoes and talk about my tips for giving your tomatoes a good strong start in the garden. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'll be back soon. Thanks.